again, this is Brian Ramirez with Team Swift Tech. Today in this video, we're going to be showing you how to expand your H220 all-in-one water cooling kit to include a graphics card into the loop. For this video today, the equipment that we'll need is obviously the H220 all-in-one kit. For graphics, we're going to be using the EVGA GeForce GTX 680 Hydro Copper, manufactured by Swift Tech. For fittings, we're going to be using the Swift Tech Lock Seal 38x58 compression fittings. We'll need a bucket to drain the H220 kit. We may also need some extra tubing. We will need some extra coolant. This is the Hydrox PM2 that comes stock with this kit. We'll need a wrench to tighten our fittings. We'll need a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, a paper clip, and we'll use either a tube cutter or a pair of scissors to cut our tubing. Draining your H220 all-in-one water cooling kit couldn't be any easier. All you need to do this is a bucket and a flathead screwdriver. Take your flathead screwdriver and just remove the fill port cap, just like so. Then take the unit just like this, very gently up over your bucket and hold it up like this and let all the fluid drain completely out of the kit. So the next thing we're going to do is test fit the H220 into the case so that we can incorporate a liquid-cooled graphics card into our loop. This will allow us to measure the correct length of tubing that we'll need in order to connect the card. To do so, we'll need to break open one of the lines to the H220 kit. The line that we do not want to break open is the line going from the radiator to the pump inlet. The inlet is clearly marked on the side of the water block housing with the word IN. The reason why we do not want to incorporate a device in between the radiator and the pump inlet is that we could possibly create an air trap, which would make it difficult, but not impossible, but difficult to fill the loop and prime the pump. So let's go the easy route and break open the outlet line to the pump, and here's how we're going to do it. So now let's go ahead and loosen the clamp on the outlet side of the pump. To do this, just take your Phillips head screwdriver like so and undo the screw. And the screw comes right out. Move the clamp up out of the way like this. Now firmly take hold of the elbow here this is your swivel elbow going into the pump because you don't want to put any unnecessary pressure on that elbow. And then just turn the tubing away from the pump like so. And there you go. As you can see, we went ahead and temporarily reinstalled our H220 kit back into the case, bolting the radiator in place with just a couple of screws here, and temporarily reinstalling our water block over our processor. We also installed our water cooled graphics card where it's going to fit into the motherboard, and we also used our lock seal 38x58 fittings, as you can see here, and tighten them down properly with a wrench as per the manufacturer's instructions. Just like so. Now, we're going to cut our tubing, first measuring it into place over our outlet from the pump to where it's going to connect to the graphics card. We're going to give ourselves about an extra inch, like so, and taking our scissors, go ahead and cut it.
Then just plug it in to the outlet. And we're going to use our thumb to measure it exactly where we want to cut it. And we're going to make a nice square cut. This is very important. This has got to be a nice square cut so that it fits properly on the fitting. And now we're going to take our tubing from the radiator to our graphics card. And since it's already here, we're just going to cut it right where we want it. Taking our scissors, making again a nice square cut. And attaching it to our water block like so. And that's how it's going to look. Now that we have removed the kit from our case along with our water cooled graphics card, we're going to go ahead and start connecting our tubing to everything and putting on our clamps and our collets. To do this, go ahead and start with the short piece of tubing here. You're going to connect it into the outlet port on your pump just like this. You're going to want to support this elbow so that you don't tweak it out of place and possibly damage it. Just push the tubing down until it mates with the flange, just like so. This is why you need a good clean cut on your tubing. Then take your clamp and you're going to want to orient it with the oval facing away from you. Just put it down like this. You're going to want the jaws oriented parallel to your pump. This way you don't have it turned in such a fashion that it will interfere with any of your components when you're actually reinstalling this into your case. Take your screw. Go ahead and put it through like so. Take your Phillips head screwdriver and tighten it straight. This way you don't misthread it. And you're going to want this clamp also completely flush with that flange. Tighten it down so that the jaws of the clamp also completely mate because this gives the right tension on the clamp to prevent leaks. With that done, then connect this end to the graphics card first by putting on your collet over the tubing like so, and then connect it to your graphics card, pushing it all the way down onto our lock seal fitting until it mates with the bottom of the fitting just like that. And then just tighten down the collet like so. So you can't tighten it anymore by hand. Then take your wrench and you can give it a couple good turns to tighten it down completely onto that fitting. Just like so. Now we're going to take the tubing coming from the radiator and connect it to a graphics card. Take the other collet, put it over the tubing. And fit it down over the fitting until again it mates with the bottom of the fitting. And tighten it down by hand. Takes a little bit of time, should be patient. Once you can't tighten it anymore by hand, then use your wrench and give it a couple turns. Just like so. Now that we have everything connected, our collets properly on and attached, and our clamp. We're ready for the next step. The next step is going to be 
to safely and properly prime your pump. And you will need to connect it to your power supply, but you do not want the power supply to be connected to the motherboard while you're doing this in case of an accidental leak. So go ahead and disconnect the ATX connector from the motherboard, the 8-pin power connector, and any other power leads from your components. And for additional safety, disconnect your power supply from the wall socket. Now for the next step, we are going to trick the power supply into thinking that it is still connected to the motherboard. There are essentially two methods to do this. One, you can purchase a power supply jump start connector. For example, one sold at Frozen CPU for $399 or other component retailers. Or two, you can use a simple paper clip and we will be using the paper clip method here. First thing is safety. Make sure that your power supply is not connected to a power source. Then all you need to do is take a paper clip, like this one, bend it into this shape as we've done here, and remove the plastic from both ends down to about a quarter of an inch. Then take your 24 pin ATX power connector, identifying the green wire connector, plug in your paper clip like so, and then you're just going to plug the other end into the black wire connector right next to it. Once you've done this, this will allow you to put power to your pump without using the motherboard. And now that we have everything connected, we're ready to go ahead and fill this kit. To do that, we're going to go ahead and reuse the packaging that came with this kit. That way we can lay everything out the way we want. You're going to start by setting up your radiator at the highest point, making sure that the fill port is sitting up so you can have access to it. You'll set your graphics card at about a medium point and you'll want your pump and water block at the lowest point so that it can be fed directly by the radiator. Now that we have it set up, go ahead and start filling it. We've got a coolant here. And just begin filling your radiator right through the fill port in your reservoir. This is going to take some time, so be patient. Once you can see the fluid getting toward the top of your fill port, then just tilt your radiator to get the air up, and you can hear it going down. Then just set it back up and continue filling. And again, just tilt it up. Once you've done this a couple of times, you're not going to be able to do much more until you actually put power to your pump. With your case close by, just use the PWM splitter and connect your pump to it. just like so. Then all you have to do is turn on your power supply. There you go, you can hear it. 
Once you hear that, go ahead and turn it off. And then just add more fluid to your radiator. Then start up the pump again, letting the fluid circulate. You can hear it running. Then again, shut it off. You can see that the fluid's gone down and top it off again. Once you've done this a couple of times, go ahead and take your cap and put it back on your float port. Just give it a little bit of a turn with your screwdriver. And start your pump. And here it start up. Now what you're going to want to do is move everything around a little bit so you can get the air that's trapped in your graphics card or anywhere else to move up into your reservoir. That way you can just add fluid to it and top it off. Go ahead and leave your pump running. Take the cap back off. And you can see that the fluid has gone down. And Go ahead and top it off while the pump is still running. Overfill a little bit, not a big deal. And go ahead and put the cap back on. And tighten it down. And now at this point, we have this unit pretty much filled. You can go ahead and turn it off, and we can move on to installing it back into the case. And now that we have reinstalled our kit and our water cool Gravitz card back into the case, the final step is about safety. We strongly recommend that you allow your kit to run by itself for several hours, even overnight if you want, without anything else connected to the motherboard or any of the other components, so that in the case of an accidental leak, nothing would be damaged. Thank you for watching this presentation.